We're here at the NV and SDN Americas event in uh, Las Colinas, Texas, just outside of Dallas. I'm here with Jill from Xilinx, and we're talking all about uh, 5G and, well, wait a minute, why, why are you guys here at an NFB event? Why is Xilinx, what, what's Xilinx doing here? We are part of the acceleration ecosystem. Okay. And so to make NFV successful, uh, and this has been stated by other speakers today, right. you need to have acceleration. And right. so we are one of the options. From the performance, it seems that we are one of the best options. But, right. but again, I will let the others uh, talking about that as well. And we are really seeing, especially on the 5G, the NFV being crucial. I think 5G will not occur without the, uh, the NFV. Right. Yeah, that's that, that's the point I was getting to. Is like when you when you have 5G, it can't happen without virtualization on a massive scale, and you can't get to virtualization until you're able to put the network functions on hardware that is really high performance. Yeah. And that's that's where that's where it all comes together. Yeah. And on the 5G, it's even more crucial because the 3GPP, uh -huh. the standard organization, has separated functions that some of them need to run into a server. So it's even not a choice, it's right. you have to. Right. So, so I see that the disaggregation that we are seeing in the full networks, for the 5G it's even more crucial. And so the performance requirements uh, around uh, just the bandwidth but as well security capabilities will make acceleration uh, and F FPGA-based acceleration even more crucial. Okay, now as we're um, going through this event, one of the other uh, uh, topics and opportunities that was brought up quite a bit was edge computing. Um, you know, vir virtualization, g getting that cloud, or the edge cloud closer to the customer so those computing capabilities can be taken advantage of. Um, whether or not we have 5G or w whether or not it's there, of course it helps with the latency, but uh, the, the type and the style of applications that we use are simply going to be using more and more computing closer to the customer. What uh, difference does Xilinx make in, uh, in an edge computing, uh, not just in the infrastructure, but in, in, in the deployment overall? The, by the way, the telco cloud that make mobile edge computing, yeah, telco yeah. cloud, that's <laughs> for us what we are calling telco cloud. Right. It's, a, it's a big opportunity for us. Because first of all, it's new. So before it was central office with big chassis. Right. Now those central office are evolving to have servers and, and mobile edge computing. And so we are able to help on bringing the information and the data into the central office or the now mobile edge computing, as well as accelerating the data. Because it's still related to as soon as you want to run something into a server, you can face performance degradation. Mm -hmm. or, if not degradation, at least you will not be able to, to have the performance that you desire right. or the latency that you desire. Especially, for example, on security, very often if you want to run security encryption at wire speed, right. the server will not be able to cope with that. Or right. you will need 10 servers to do that. Right. <laughs> and so, for example, we are showing at the show uh, an acceleration for security where we can replace seven servers by, by one with an acceleration card compared to without acceleration card. So the mobile edge computing, in fact, is a very cost efficient, need to be cost efficient environment. Yeah. And this is where we can help as well is making these more, more cost efficient. I'm glad you brought up security because that's another um, interesting area where um, that, that kind of comes up when you're talking about virtualizing different parts of the network. You suddenly are introducing, especially as we move to the cloud, you're introducing um, you know, different software on different vendors' hardware, and the theory is that that would increase the number of uh, attack points. Uh, Potentials, yeah. Yeah, and so how does how does uh, Xilinx uh, uh, mitigate those attack points and make and make security consistent throughout the network? So we will be one layer below what you're asking because the, the security software mm -hmm. will, will will do that, and we are not providing the security software, but right. we will allow acceleration or performance on the security to be able to do and to protect those different ports, okay. network ports that will arrive into the into the mech. The other thing is on the 5G, there is a security called PDCP and virtualizing it make it a lot of sense, but then something you are facing performance right. issue. Right. And so you need to have this acceleration 
for the PDCP, for the security, for the 5G. And so what we have done, for example, we have hardened the block of acceleration to be more efficient from a power perspective and as well from the performance perspective. Excellent. All right, well, Sheila, thanks very much for, uh, for talking with us today and thanks for being here at the oh, event. Phil, thank you to have us. Okay. Thank you.